What's going on guys? Welcome to the stream. Hopefully the quality stays good this time. We're going to try this one last time. This is actually uh, take three, so let's see how we do on this. I'm going to start right from the top. So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to uh, clean some Evan Garcia around bait caster reels. And we're going to be working with the C3 models today. I'm going to show you guys how to take them apart, piece by piece, go over what each piece does, kind of how the reel works, and uh, what you expect to get out of the reels. And uh, we can go into some more detail once it's over. But we have one of the older models here, and you can tell the older models they have these uh, ribbons on the, these ribbon decals on the side plates. And your Made in Sweden will be up here towards the top. I don't know how well it's showing right here and we have a newer model C3 uh, probably one people are more used to seeing where your uh, your made in Sweden's on the bottom and then you got your indication here on the top of the right side plate and there's no ribbon decals so uh, I want to say they started this maybe like 2013 or so maybe a little sooner I'm not sure but we're going to start with the new one, and then I'll go over everything again with this older one since I got two I got to clean anyway. And for people who have never done this before, you guys will come to see that these round reel bait casters that Abby makes, they're, they're a lot like Ford. You can pretty much take one part off of one and put it on another, and there's no difference to them. They're so identical, and they're so interchangeable. You can do all kinds of stuff with them and customize them any way you want. You can take red plates off a of 6000 and put it on this. Or you can take a frame and a spool and the worm gear and all that from all, from like a 4500 or 5500 model. And you can take the side plates and all this stuff and shrink it or expand it. And there, there's just so much you can do with them. So we're going to start by taking these apart. I'm going to show you what you need to do it. I'm going to show you what you need to clean it. Um, just some real simple tools, some real simple items, nothing expensive, nothing fancy. I'm all about cheap tackle, and I'm all about cheap ways of getting things done. I don't want to put a lot of money into something that I know I'm going to end up having to replace very soon because I fish a lot. So, without further ado, let's get started here. If you guys have any questions along the way, go back and rewind and watch it again or leave it in the comments and uh, I can get back to you as soon as I see it and I'll try to help you guys out but it's really not that hard I promise you're going to learn how to do this yourself and you're going to save yourself a lot of money instead of paying somebody else to do it I need to put this over here so that smoke ain't blowing in your guys' screen so we're going to move this older C3 out of the way, and we're going to start off with this bigger C3, or the newer C3, not bigger. So you're going to need, what am I going to, you're going to need a, a small Phillips head screwdriver. Um, a pair of needle nose pliers comes in handy, multi-tool is even better. Don't have to have one or the other. Um, I just got both here so you can see the difference. Um, flathead tip screwdriver is optional. It's not necessary, but it is convenient to have. Um, I have a little uh, needle threader here. Just something where the really sharp point you might need to kind of pick away at something or get some dirt out in case you got little grits of sand or uh, dirt that you need to get out of a little nook or cranny. We're going to be using some clean Q-tips and paper towels to, to clean all the parts and components and get all the old oil and grease and lube and stuff out with. And we're going to replace it with new real oil. Any type of oil is actually not that big a deal. I've seen people use motor oil, uh, gear oil, transmission oil, any type of oil. Something smooth and slick that's not going to gum up. You want something that's got a high friction reduction this is actually air tool oil 
and this will probably last me for years. You're only going to use a couple drops. You're not using a whole lot. You don't want to use a whole lot because too much will actually bog it down and slow it down and it starts to feel more like a hydraulic instead of a free spinning piece. Um, grease is optional. Um, Abby Garcia makes their own grease and it's blue uh, bearing grease. That's exactly what this is, is blue bearing grease. It's the exact same thing pretty much that you're getting in that Abby Garcia real, real grease. And this will probably actually work better than uh, the Abby Garcia oil. That's air tool oil. And I have some air tools that spin at 90,000 RPMs, high friction, high speed. And that's made to work for that to keep it uh, moving nice and fluent. So if it can handle 90,000 RPMs, imagine what it's going to do for your reel. Real slick, real, real fine viscosity. Perfect for uh, fishing reels. Any type of reel, really. It doesn't matter if it's just an Abu Garcia. You can use it to oil up any fishing reel you have. And I think that covers it for our utensils. I have uh, paper towels laid out here to lay all my parts out. And once I get it all taken down and broken down and separated, I'm going to show you how I lay my stuff out. And I recommend you do the same. You don't just want to have everything everywhere, especially if you're not familiar with it. Um, I would recommend that you kind of set them down in the order that you get them. And that you take them apart and then you can put them back in the reverse oper operation and then it's a little less headache for you so what we're going to do first is we're going to take apart the the left side which is the clicker side and this literally just has your cog wheel and your, your clicker mechanism in it and depending on what uh, type of reel you have and depending on what year it is how new or older it is you might have a couple different styles of clickers one you're going to see in here is actually in both these reels. That clicker has been upgraded, I believe. Um, some of the older ones, like 6000s and uh, 6500 Cs and things like that, you're just going to have a metal flat that bounces off of that gear and there it makes it click. And it's actually a louder clicker, so if you can get those, more power to you. I like those better than these newer style clickers. You can uh, bend them a little bit and adjust them, make them stiffer or looser, and actually adjust how loud that click is. And the louder it is, the farther away you can hear it from, which is always a benefit. So we're going to take this part apart first with this Phillips head. And there's three small screws. Just pop it out real simple. You're going to notice... Uh, Something a little different about these C3s compared to one straight out of the box, because it's uh, these have been upgraded. This has a both of these have a six bearing upgrade in them, and your standard C3 has the one anti reverse bearing in the handle in the handle uh, hole, and then you have a uh, bearing on each side of the spool, and that's it. And most of your standard Abu reels only have those three bearings. All every single 6500 CS Pro Rocket is a three bearing reel, with the exception of the Black Edition Rocket, which is five bearings. But your uh, your Trophy Collection, your Catfish Special, your Striper Special, all those are all three bearing reels. So, when you get this off, put that back since it came apart. I'm supposed to be doing this step by step. What's wrong with me? Once you get this off, you're going to have your uh, clicker lever. This engages and disengages your clicker. And this is where your uh, spool spindle sits. And then you have your cog wheel here. This is an upgrade. This is a two bearing cog wheel. Right out of the box, your cog wheel is not going to have any bearings. It's just going to be one nylon piece on that spindle. And it's hard pressed onto it. And nine times out of ten, if you're uh, 
nine times out of ten you're going to end up having to break the old one off to get the new one on but if you're really really super careful you can get it off without breaking it but these you can get single bearing cog wheels and you can get uh, twin bearing cog wheels and you can even get something more than this you can get skeletonized one where a lot of this plastic material on the gear is cut out and it looks like a wagon wheel and uh, you can get slotted ones just like a slotted rotor on a car they got holes in it to reduce friction reduce weight and it's all about getting more spin because there's less weight spinning on that cog wheel less mass turning it's not exactly necessary I got these reels like this on a trade if this was just a standard C3 you're not going to really notice too much of a difference for what you're going to be using for catfishing unless you're on the ocean or Lake Erie or something and you're throwing hundreds of yards out you're not really going to need that so it's not a big deal if you have this or not if you do want it and you do want to upgrade you can uh, go on eBay and get it real cheap it's just uh, probably 20 bucks or less sometimes even cheaper uh, I'm not sure on the current prices but it's uh, very affordable and it's easy to do so that's all that is and it's retained in with an e-clip <clears throat> these little e-clips you might want to stock up on because taking them off is a pain in the butt and I'll explain why in a second because I think one of these reels is actually missing one on the handle not a big deal so once you get that plate off you're gonna see this see if it'll focus in here this is your uh, your worm gear one side of your worm gear this is your clicker mechanism which engages into your spool here and as your spool turns see if I can hold this down as your spool turns it hits those and that's what makes your clicker sound and when it's disengaged it stays away from it and it's held in just on these two rods here and it's got these plastic spacers to keep it in place once the plate's on So, let's see here. Looks like a bolt went flying somewhere. I'm done missing a screw. How about that? Oh, well, I'll find it. The clicker here just slides right out. That part's done. Now you have your spool. I take my spool out next, just slides right out. Now when it comes to your spool, there's two bearings in this typically. If you're, um, if you have like a 6,000 or uh, you think you might have got a disc on a tray and think somebody pulled one over, take a few seconds and take it apart and see if somebody took the bearings out of your spool. If it doesn't feel like it's going as fast as it should, they might have been replaced with bushings. Um, I believe I got some bushings back here in the mudroom, but it literally just looks like a big brass ring, the exact same size as your bearing. And on your spool here you have, this is on your handle side, is your brakes. I leave all mine pushed in, I don't have any brakes active, they're centrifugal force activated. And they have a little uh, clip that you can pop, and they slide up. Now that one's up, so now when that's activated, this will free slide. And as the reel's spinning, these will flare out and rub against your uh, brake system here and slows it down just like a car. Centrifugal force slows it down. So it'll uh, stop the spool sooner so you don't backlash as often. I don't need them, so I keep them all pressed in. Some people just flat out break them out so they don't pop loose ever. Um, this will actually pop off here fairly easily some people will uh, use a flathead trying to be gentle here there we go this comes off and it enables you to get your your uh, handle side bearing out and then there's a little washer in there So we're going to set these here, 
on this side of your uh, clicker side, you've got this nylon gear that pops right out, and you have another bearing that comes out. These are your bearings. Easy peasy. And it, it does in fact look like it was in due for a cleaning. Now some spools like on uh, records, I believe they have an anti, it's an anti reverse bearing built into it. Some of the really older stuff like the, um, oh what are they? The uh, alt, no, what is that? Ultracast C3s. They'll actually have the the bearings uh, built into the spool, and they're I can't remember if they're removable or not. I never bothered with it. But the spindle and spool, if I remember right, are all in one piece, and the bearings are on the outside of the spool, hanging onto the spindle. So you might have to look up uh, some differences if you do have one of those reels. They're, they're all still good reels. When I had my ultra cast, I just cleaned the outside of it all real good. Put a couple, put a drop of oil on each bearing to re-lube it and then it was still good to go. You don't necessarily have to go this far into a teardown as I'm doing. I'm just doing it more for information reasons. But some people don't even go this far. Now you have this little clip that holds your worm gear in. It just uh, it's held on by these two pins here and it just slides out and away. Easy peasy. I said I was going to sort all this stuff out so I guess I need to do that. So we got a bearing, bearing, brake, washer. Okie dokie. Now that that clips off, what you're going to do is this is where the flathead's optional, or you can take some needle nose. You might actually need the flathead if it's too tight. But this, uh, I might need that flathead. So maybe you might want a flathead. There's a housing for your uh, worm gear to get the level one to come off. And that's where your uh, paw is. So we're going to take our flathead right here in that slot. I'm trying to look at my screen right here. We're going to pop that loose. Just give it a quick turn counterclockwise, lefty loosey, off it goes. Now these usually have a stainless steel paw. This is actually an upgrade too, is a ceramic paw. It's white ceramic. Again, friction reduce, reduction, weight reduction, all that good stuff. Then this worm gear is just going to slide right out. This is your worm gear. This is your level one. This is your worm gear housing. <clears throat> Here's where another upgrade is hidden. They call it a double bearing worm gear. This is a single bearing worm gear. Typically, there's just a nylon bushing on the handle side, and the nylon bushing for this side is built into the worm gear. So if you want to upgrade to the double bearing worm gear, you would have to actually buy the new worm gear with the bearing pressed into it. But if you want to just get the single bearing worm gear and get just a little more friction reduction, this is the only little bearing you're going to have. It's a little bit smaller than your spool bearings. So that comes away from the housing and it just sits down inside here. <clears throat> Now we have the worm gear and the level wind disassembled. Don't want to lose that paw. 
otherwise it won't operate. So now this whole side is broke down. Next you can just pop out your spindle, just pull it right out. This you can take off if you want to, your thumb guard. Some people don't even have them anymore. Just pop off. There we go. Now all we gotta do is this guy. Now depending on what reel you got your handles might look a little different, but they're all pretty much the same. You got your handle and you've got a cover and some sort of uh, bolt or um, just like a little piece of stainless metal that's in that has a hole in the shape of the uh, nut that's housed inside here one way or another it keeps the nut from vibrating apart your handle falling off so this we're just going to pop this little screw off here I hope it's not cutting out too bad because it keeps saying bad connection, poor connection. I don't know why, but we're in the house. I'm still learning this YouTube stuff, guys. So this is my housing here. Let me unplug this, see if that's interfering. I had a, a charger port plugged in. Now I'm blurry. Come on. Where are we going? This house don't like me. <laughs> so now that we have the, the handle housing off, you got a little bolt. And this was the one that has the, the E-clip missing. There will be a little tiny E-clip right here right above this bolt and that is to keep this nut from uh, coming off if you don't have and you don't have the housing eventually this nut's going to vibrate fish and your handle's just going to fly off so you don't want to lose that you want to have definitely want to have this housing on here keeps everything in place so this is where that little reel tool that comes in the box comes in handy because that's your basically your little wrench and this is where the needle nose come to substitute or any type of wrench you got a little crescent wrench laying around all you gotta do is just break that nut, that nut loose it should never be too tight that unthreads This slides right off. That E clip would keep your handle from coming off right there. So you might lose your nut, but with that E clip on, this ain't gonna go past that, and you're ready to rock. Next, you have a pressure plate, or that's what I call it. it has to do with your uh, uh, drag star. A little tiny plate, and it's got a slight angle to it kind of like a trapezoid type shape it's got a bevel let's see will it show up good kind of see the bevel once you got that off time for the drag star this might be one of the more annoying parts especially when you go to put it back on um, because it has a, let's see, mm, it's got a uh, slot on the thread. Zoom in. Woo, come on, focus. Anyway, you'll know it when you see it. It's got a, there's your threads facing the camera. No threads. So as you go to back this off, it'll get kind of tight. 
and then it'll come loose again once it gets past the uh, transition because a certain way down it turns into all thread well more thread it's not threaded completely away around it's got a step in it it's got a machine it comes down then it comes out a little bit and goes down on both sides so now your drag starts out of the way now we're getting down to the nitty gritty there's going to be a couple spacer washers in here I usually get these out before I take the plate off because I want to hold them in the exact position that they're in and just set them down for now so I go to clean them because they have a concave and convex side and you want to keep them the same it all goes back to that pressure for the, the drag next we're going to take off our tensioner cap for the spool tensioner the tighter you got this the less your spool spins the looser you got it the more free spinning your spool your spool spins so now that's set down now we're going to get to these thumb screws they call them thumb screws because you should be able to get them off with your thumb I like to have them just a tad bit tighter than that that's why they have these flathead slots this is where also the needle nose are optional you can grab them with needle nose and just give them a twist and they pop loose too or you can take your flathead pop them loose and then they just spin off with your thumb this is actually like a a sleeve bolt if you will the thread the female threads are on the inside of this and the male threads are actually on the frame now that will pop off fair frame out of the way now I don't know how well you can see this but you've got your plate your side plate and then you have your brake plate here two different plates you can kind of tell some some people get a uh, black plastic ones depending on what type of model they have the 6600 series that sell a Bass Pro has a black plastic one and those are actually built a little different on the inside because they're made in China not Sweden now we got two more Phillips head to take off here and you want to hold this upright while you're doing this set that one down pop this one out you want to pull this very gently straight up okay you don't want none of this stuff falling apart just yet we're going to get to that in a second let's talk about what's on the inside of this plate so depending on what you got it's really not all that special you just have these uh let's see if it'll you got your uh thumb bolts here and this is where your other side of your spool spindle goes in and runs into your tensioner knob and this is one bearing here this is your instant anti-reverse bearing inside here Let's see if it'll uh, show up pretty good it only spins one way if you try to spin backwards towards yourself counterclockwise it'll stop the handle it's an anti-reverse bearing and a lot of people uh, pack this up with grease I don't think it really matters if it's grease or oil but that's just me I could be wrong I'm not an expert this is just how I do the reels so we're almost done getting it broke down and then we're going to get into cleaning and you want to be looking for a few things while you're doing this too once I get it apart I'll explain this is your drive shaft and it literally just comes up off 
Your drive shaft has a series of drag washers. This one don't want to come up. I'm going to be gentle with these little tiny parts. Definitely don't want to bend one or kink anything up. Now this is about as far as I get with this. I don't take the engager off at all. That's what I call it. Your push button. This raises and lowers your pinion gear. Which lets your spool free spin and engages your drive shaft. Well, your drive shaft engages it. This all comes apart, but I don't ever really mess with it. It stays oiled pretty good. It doesn't get too gunked up. It doesn't get too uh, dirty. So I leave it be. And this is the shaft that your drive shaft sits on. Now, down at the bottom of this drive shaft, at the base here, is this little itty bitty tiny, tiny washer. Do not lose it. Spacing is everything. On the actual drive shaft, you have another spacer here, which sometimes is stubborn. That's what you don't want to happen. <laughs> Now I gotta find that sucker. It just flew off. I heard it land. That's the problem you run into with the uh, Eclipse. And I should have known better. I'll find it later. Yeah, when you're uh, popping stuff loose like that, guys, uh, it's handy to actually have like a plastic bag or something so you don't have something flying off and it'll actually land in the bag. So we'll get that. We'll get back to that in a second. I'm going to keep going on. That's what I like about live streams. You guys get to see me mess up. So these... Uh, will come up off the shaft too and something's not wanting to play nice here I might have a little burr you got a series of washers and it goes metal washer drag washer which sometimes are carbon sometimes are rubber depending on what model you have and how old it is you got a wing washer that's what I call it another drag washer and you just got a straight flat washer and then finally if it'll come out another drag washer sometimes the last one can be a little stubborn and you want to be very gentle getting it out. Don't want to scuff it up. Then you of all of it underneath that gear. This is your drive gear. And then underneath your drive gear, washer. Then you get down to this other upgradable piece. You can get a drive shaft that has a bearing inserted down in the bottom there. And there will be a little bearing up inside this to help this spin better too. Totally not necessary, but it's out there. Okay, so I'm going to organize a couple things here real quick. And in this teardown, I have since lost one side plate bolt. The E-clip on the handle was already missing. And... that spacer for the drive shaft. So 
So we're going to organize this all out. Give you a basic idea of what you want to be looking for. And nothing, none of this has to be set in a specific order. I'm doing this more for show just because I know what all parts are what. And uh, how they all go back together so it's not a big deal for me. So let's set this here, we'll set this here, we'll set this here. Okay. So where's the camera switch? This is what you are looking at. This is your reel. So first we took off the plate and then we took off your spacers. Well, these bolts came first. That's one of the bolts I'm missing. Took off the plate, then the clicker, the spacers. Then we got the spool off. We got the bearings out, the brake off, the nylon gear out. These are separate bolts. Got to keep those separate. Got the spool spindle off. Then we worked on the worm gear. This will go in here. This goes on this end. This goes up inside here. This covers that up, keeps it in place. This holds it all together. And uh, then we got into the handle. We got the handle off with the drag star. These are the two spacers, and those will actually set like so back down inside there. And then we had this spool tensioner. We got that off of the plate. These two bolts go into the plate. Then we worked on taking apart the, uh, the drive shaft. This little washer here, one that we're going here, and then you have your six washer system, metal, carbon, metal, carbon, metal, carbon. But you would actually put it on one, two, three, four, five, six. That goes on top, top to bottom. This will sit underneath here, or will sit underneath here on this. And then once all that's back together, We'll slide that back on there and we'll begin to build. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some paper towels and some q-tips and we're just going to give this stuff a good once over, give it a good cleaning. And you want to do this every once in a great while. You don't want to wait too long to do it because the dirt and sand that can get down in your reel can actually uh, put scratches and stuff in all your sliding parts and can slow it down or actually tear them up to where they're no good and then you have to by replacement parts so we're just going to give all this stuff a good wipe down make it all shiny and slick again and then we'll get to uh, getting it built back together so that's going to end part time to look for those pieces I flung off like an idiot <laughs> so stay tuned this will be exactly how you see it when we come back and we'll put this sucker back together and then we'll go over some uh, options on what you can do to make them better uh, things to look out for um, things to indicate you might need to replace something or if you're getting one of these on a trade by chance to know if you might have been lied to about somebody saying oh yeah it's got a seven bearing upgrade um, which if somebody told me that on this reel they would be lying so I'll give you a little hints and tips and tricks as we go along. Um, I don't want this video to be hours long. So I'm going to go look for that piece real quick and then we'll fire up one more stream showing how to get this all back together. We'll see you soon.